Hi, my name is Steve Cavallaris with electricaltime.com. In this episode, we're going to be looking at the required receptacle outlets for this bathroom. So I know this is a hotel bathroom, but let's just make believe it's a dwelling unit, you know, just for the purpose of this video. We're going to be in the 2023 National Electrical Code, and we're going to be looking at 210.52D, and that's called bathrooms. And let's read that together in our code book. At least one receptacle outlet shall be installed in bathrooms within three feet of the outside edge of each sink. The receptacle outlet shall be located on a wall or partition that is adjacent to the sink or sink countertop located on the countertop or installed on the side or face of the sink cabinet. In no case shall the receptacle be located more than 12 inches below the top of the sink or sink countertop. Receptacle outlet assemblies listed for use in countertops shall be permitted to be installed in the countertop. All right, so we just read that short little section, but there was so much information in there, and let's dissect it piece by piece now. Okay, so we just read about the three-foot maximum that we can be here, you know, from the edge of the sink, where we're going to be installing that receptacle outlet. And what's a receptacle outlet? It's the box. So when you hear somebody say receptacle outlet, the box. When you hear somebody say the receptacle, that's going to be the device that's inside the box. So here we have a GFCI receptacle device. All right, so let's take our measuring tape and let's see where the edge of this box is furthest from the edge of the sink. So if we look over here, we're about 18 inches. Okay, so we're within the three foot. So if you had a long countertop here, you can measure here from the edge of the sink, go up 36 inches to the furthest edge of that box, right? So make sure you go to the furthest edge, not to the closest edge, because if you go to the closest edge, then everything else inside that box is gonna be more than 36 inches away from the edge of the sink. All right, so that's the first part that we have to look at. And again, we only have to install one receptacle outlet. Now, when you got a big, you know, bathroom sink like this, and you got this nice countertop, might be a good idea to put one on the, on the left side and one on the right side of the sink. So make sure you ask the homeowner if they'd like to have one receptacle outlet, which is required, or would they like to have an additional one? So the other thing that we saw in 210.52D, it talks about, you know, this wall over here, right? So that's really important. So when we're installing that receptacle outlet in this type of bathroom, right, it's going to be most common to install that receptacle outlet in the wall. All right, so that's usually where they're going to be installed. Now, sometimes I've seen them where you've got a listed assembly. That's a hole that's cut into the countertop. And then you have this listed assembly for this installation, for this wet location, where you push on it, and then it pops up. And then when you push it back down, it stays down. All right, the other location where we can put a receptacle, remember it said receptacle, not receptacle outlet, when it was talking about measuring from the top, I know it's all confusing. So what I'm going to interpret that as, the receptacle outlet, okay? So I'm gonna measure here from the top, it's gonna to go down to 12 inches to the bottom of the box, the bottom of the box, all right? And then you could put a receptacle outlet here on the side but I don't want you to do that, all right? I know what the code says you can do, but I'll tell you why I think it's a bad idea. Because, you know, you can have something on top of here and the cord is hanging out over here and a little kid comes by and pulls on the cord. And that could be a very dangerous situation. So please don't do that. Even though the code still allows you to do that, um, I don't suggest that you do that. 
But if you look at the required receptacle outlets uh, for the kitchen countertops, they took it away. You can no longer put that receptacle outlet on the side of the kitchen cabinets. And they did that for the, that exact reason. Little kids were getting hurt and killed. And, you know, it's you know, a very sad time when a little kid gets hurt or killed. You know, you, you might not have kids right now. And, you know, you might say, well, I don't have kids. But, you know, you might live in the house for, you know, 10, 20 years. And then the next people that move in, they might have some kids. You know, so let's think about, you know, the future generations of our children. Let's help to keep them safe. And that's the most important thing that we can do as electricians to help keep people safe from the hazards of electricity. And, you know, the other thing I want you to think about, you know, so let's say you've got the height here of the, the sink or the countertop. And let's say there's going to be a backsplash just like this one over here. So make sure when you install the height of that box that it's not in the middle of the wall in the backsplash. And you know what? Ask the homeowner, where would you like this receptacle outlet? You know, according to what we see here, that's going to be sort of the top of the backsplash. Maybe go up like two, three, four, five inches, six inches. I don't know. But let the homeowner decide, you know, what that height's going to be. But don't go too tall because, you know, then you're going to have an installation that might not be practical. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to mention is a couple of other code sections that you got to be aware of. And that's going to be 210.8 for GFCI protection. Remember, it's a bathroom and a dwelling unit. And that receptacle is going to have to be GFCI protected. Also, we, we really should consider uh, arc fault protection in 210.12. However, when you go to read 210.12, it doesn't require dwelling unit bathrooms, receptacles, outlets to be AFCI protected. And I don't understand why they didn't require that, but they do require that in dormitory units. So if you look at 210.12 for a dormitory unit, it says, yeah, you know, the, um, you know, those receptacles in the bathroom of a dormitory unit have to be AFCI protected. But in the dwelling unit, it's not required. All right, but I personally, I think it's a good idea, you know, just to put the arc fault protection, because really what it does, it can help to stop a fire before it starts. All right, and I know there's been, you know, a lot of conversations in the, the code meetings about this, about, you know, not putting AFCI protection in bathrooms. And you know what, quite honestly, I think it's absolutely silly uh, not to include it because, you know, really what arc fault does, it actually senses if there's an arc and it might not trip a regular breaker, but if you got an arc fault breaker and it senses a little arc because of a loose wire or something, then it's gonna shut the power off and possibly it could save your house from getting burnt down. So, all right, and again, that, that's just my personal opinion. Also, we're gonna have to make sure that they're tamper-resistant receptacles as per 406.12, all right? So I'm gonna repeat all of the code sections here so you can go check it out in your code book. Again, we're talking about 210.52D for the required receptacles in uh, dwelling unit bathrooms. Then we're talking about 210.8, and that's GFCI protection. Then we're talking about 210.12, AFCI protection. However, I mentioned this, that uh, for dwelling unit bathrooms, they're not required, but I think it's a good idea anyway. And then we've got 406.12, tamper-resistant receptacles. All right. Oh, I almost forgot one thing. Uh, if you go to my website, electricaltime.com, I've got free code questions and answers on the National Electrical Code. Uh, these code questions and answers are designed for the electricians out there. So if you're an electrician and you like my code questions and answers, let the other electricians know about it. And when you watch my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up and leave me a nice comment. And if you don't like my videos, give it two thumbs down.
all right? Not just one, but two, all right? Uh, hopefully you got something out of this quick video. On behalf of electricaltime.com, my name is Steve Cavallaris, and we will catch you on the next video. Thank you.